Now, back to Access Tech Live, the latest in tech and accessibility with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. And we're back on Access Tech Live. I'm Stephen Scott, Mark Aflalo is with me this week as always. Now look, we love our tech and this week we're going to push the limits a little bit and add a, a G rating to this particular show, Mark. Well, actually, we're going to be adding a PG rating, I think, to this show. Uh, Rochelle Minette is a sex educator, a certified therapeutic recreation specialist. She's the education coordinator at Venus NV Halifax, an education-based sex shop and bookstore where she leads and creates workshops, lectures, other programming, all about sex and sexuality. Now, you may have seen her on AMI-TV as the host of that sex show. You can find episodes on AMI+. Plus. Rochelle, thank you so much for joining us on Access Tech Live. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, Rochelle, it's great to have you here. And we're glad to have you here because, look, Mark and I know how important this topic is. But, you know, we're not very accustomed to talking about sex in public, never mind even on television. Uh, you do both. So perhaps you could tell us how you get into this profession and why you feel it is uh, so important to discuss. Yeah, I mean, gosh, I love talking about sex. There's something about getting to talk about things that I know makes people squeamish. I know people are sort of uncomfy with and and bridging that gap a little bit to get people to be more comfy. I feel like that's so important and kind of like what, what drives me, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I got into this work sort of by accident. I think that often happens in this kind of work. Um, I My background's in recreation therapy, uh, which, you know, focused a lot on disability uh, and leisure and, you know, people's fun and what people wanted to do for fun. Uh, and I noticed while I was going through that schooling that there wasn't really people talking about sex or sexuality or like this thing that I know is fun and I think a lot of people know is fun and perhaps leisure for a lot of folks um, but it just wasn't really coming up and so I decided to go back to school do a master's degree do some research um, and focus specifically on sex and disability uh, and then sort of like during that time I actually uh, became disabled myself and you know it was not news to me per se but that's when my body sort of changed and got a little more complicated so it's a very you know, meta experience, I suppose, when I was doing my research. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I fell into this. I was just like, hey, I feel like people should talk about this more and they're not. And I'm just going to fill that gap myself, I guess, at least in sort of the world that I was already in. Um, yeah, and then I started working at a education-based sex shop and bookstore and the rest is history. Rochelle, why don't, why don't you think people are talking about it? Why, why is it so taboo? Oh gosh, I mean... I think part of it is like that we try to withhold pleasure from people in general. Like it's it's easier to, you know, get people to fall in line, I think, when, and, you know, in sort of our society where there are a lot of rules that we're supposed to be following. Um, it's easier to, to get people to follow those rules when we withhold something that feels good that like is pleasurable um you know i also think that a lot of our society comes from very puritanical worldviews of what sex is supposed to look like what it's supposed to be for and usually that reason is not pleasure based it's usually very specific often around procreation which i mean that's definitely not why i am having sex uh but you know also a valid reason but i think for the majority of people it's because it feels good um, but yeah, I think it's hard to convince ourselves that we're allowed to feel good. I think there's a lot of a lot of, yeah, hesitancy for some reason for people to to do that. And you know, it's like we've been told it's private. We've been told it is taboo, and that just kind of feeds into the idea that it is taboo. It just continues on and on to to convince us that we're not supposed to talk about it. But once we start, I don't know, we start realizing a lot of us have a lot of stuff in common and and we're feeling the same things a lot of the time and the same fears and and worried about a lot of the same stigmas. And if we just talked about it, the stigma would probably not exist. Well, sex uh, it can be a taboo subject in the mainstream, uh, absolutely. But would you say that when it comes to disability, that perhaps it is even more taboo that I, I might even go so far to say as it has been, uh, I've been accused of being asexual over my years. You know, mm -hmm. it's a case of, well, it's almost a case of disabled people don't even think about sex, never mind talk about it. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I like it stems from so many places of, you know, people assume that people with disabilities are like childlike or that, you know, we have to be taken care of. And so we're more like children than someone else who doesn't have a disability. Um, and of course, like, you know, we assume that children don't have sexualities, like even then. Um, and of course, we don't want like kids to be going off and having sex, of course, you know, it's risky and not not what's supposed to be happening, I suppose. Um, but by like assigning this sort of like childishness or like this sort of like infantilization to all people with disabilities, um, we start to think, oh, well, they also shouldn't be having disabilities. If you need someone to take care of you in any way, then that equals like, oh, you shouldn't have sex. Um, but that just doesn't make any sense in my mind. Like we all need to be cared for and care for each other. Um, it just, you know, to different extents and different levels. But, you know, I really don't like, I think this like idea of interdependence can kind of be better for us than this idea of independence, which, you know, often is sort of looked at as like individualism. Um, but yeah, so like that infantilization piece is so huge. Uh, I also find that a lot of the conversation, because we're so stuck on that idea of like procreation is the only reason to have sex. And we're also, you know, there's a lot of taboo around disabled people having children um, or, you yes. know, uh, people not being able to have children for a variety of reasons uh, uh -huh. and then being like, well, if you can't have children, then there's no point in sex, even though there's lots of different points of sex. <laughs> yeah. And I think like that's such a, you know, that all kind of wrapped up also in the in the fact that like we never think about asexuality as like a valid sexuality in these conversations and so for me who's part of the queer community and who talks a lot about like sexuality and asexuality and, and just all these different sexualities that exist all at the same time and in, in lots of I don't know, cool ways I think um this idea that we've now assigned a specific sexuality to like all disabled people really I think confuses a lot of people around like what that even means and really what I'm finding in sort of the the disability world is that it's not that people are asexual necessarily although there are lots of disabled people who are also ace or arrow um, but we're being desexualized. And I like that word because it's it's mm. sort of that that verb that's being done to us and that we don't have to accept that. Like we could just say, actually, I want to have sex. I'm a sexual being. I have sexual attraction to people. Um, and really and it's that someone surprise else that's people. like trying to... That yeah, exactly. What you're saying will exactly. absolutely surprise people. So, look, this is Access Tech Live, right? So the, we, we, we have to talk about tech, otherwise someone shouts in my ear and says, why are you not talking about tech? So I want to ask you this. How does tech itself come into this conversation? Yeah, so I work at a sex store. Uh, and, you know, when I think about sex tech, or when I think about sort of like assistive tech in general, for me, there's this really obvious connection between sex toys sort of more broadly and like accessible technology and adaptive technology. Um, and some of it is like pretty low tech, like I'm going to show you some in a second that are like things attached to other things is really like the my favorite thing to do at work. Um, but yeah, for me, there's always been this really obvious connection as someone who like works in this field that sex toys are a form of accessible technology. They help people experience pleasure with more ease. They help people get to where they want to go in some way. And they help people feel the things they want to feel. And that feels really exciting. They make, they literally make pleasure more accessible. And that can be for any person, whether they are disabled or not. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. One of, one of the things that I really get excited about at work is to figure out how to make sex more accessible with the toys that we have, but also how to make the toys we have more accessible by doing a little bit of sex toy hacking, uh, or what I like to call at least. And it's about connection too, right? It's about, you know, think about long distance relationship, things about, you know, just be, mm -hmm. people just staying connected no matter where they are. Rochelle, stick around for a minute. I want to get to those toys and we want to talk about this a little bit further. We're going to take a quick break and come back so you're not interrupted as you go through it. So uh, stick around. This is Access Tech Live. Uh, Rochelle Minette will be back with us in just a moment here. There's more Access Tech Live to come. Get involved and have your say at Access Tech Live on social media. We'll be right back. <laughs> 